Hello there. Get ready for a soy latte guzzling, yogurt weaving rejoiner meltdown of epic proportions as they gaze in awe at the majestic potential of Brexit UK, which is finally being realised. Marvellous. The rejoiner brigade will be very unhappy with this news coming in because UK-US trade is set to flourish. The incoming flood of deals between individual US states and Britain is a firm up yours to the Keir Starmers and Nick Cleggs of this world, those who want us enslaved by the EU and other global organisations, like the one that King Charles is a spokesperson for, you know, the world economic thingy. And it's not only Brexiteers calling this succession of individual trade deals between the UK and US states really good news. The Institute of Export and International Trade that is working with the Business Secretary Kemi Badenoch on increasing our trade potential is saying it too. It points out that with the deal agreed yesterday between the UK and Washington State, we have now exceeded the £2 trillion mark of GDP of US states that we've done deals with. Washington State alone has a GDP of $582 billion. And the Director General of the Institute of Export and International Trade, Marco Forgioni, said... The MOUs that the government is securing with the individual states are really powerful. What's great about them is that they are each unique and distinctive based on the profile of the state itself. And they are obviously trade experts and should therefore know what they're on about. While the Democratic Party Governor of Washington State, Jay Inslee, said... The MOU makes the UK Washington's latest global partner in trade and innovation focused on clean technology and industry. It seems that we don't necessarily need a full federal deal with Biden's useless, I mean US, administration to get good results. Now, Industry Minister Nusrat Ghani said... Each US state is a massive global market in its own right, and many have economies larger than the GDP of whole countries. By notching up our sixth such deal, we've surpassed the £2 trillion mark for combined GDP of states who've done a deal with the UK, with many more in our sights. And her department is hoping that this MOU will increase the number of deals between the UK and Washington State and also that aerospace will be a priority sector under the agreement, said the Institute. And according to the Express, Kemi Badenoch and British trade officials are running circles around the US President Joe Biden, proving Remainers wrong. Now, the reason these MOUs mean a lot is because the UK has a very service orientated economy, 80% or so. And the use of these MOUs agreed with individual states is the only way of accessing the US market in services. And as already pointed out, the deals can be tailored to engage with the strengths of individual states. For example, while the Washington state deal is based on the aero industry, any deal we do with the next state on the list, Florida, will be based on fintech. And this Washington state deal is just the sixth one to be agreed. The others being Indiana, North Carolina, South Carolina, Oklahoma and the most recent, Utah, which was signed up to on the 22nd of June. But the Department for Business and Trade is already said to be actively engaging with other states, including Colorado, which has a GDP of $386 billion, Texas, which has a GDP of $2 trillion, the second largest in the US, and the largest in financial terms, California, with a GDP of $3.6 trillion. That's more than the UK GDP. The initial plan was, as I understand it, to start talks with 20 US states. Keep racking them up, as they say. Now, in its piece, 
The Express says that the key deals for the UK were always the individual state deals, not one with the federal government. And also that the rejoiners are wrong when they crow about Brexit UK not managing to get an overarching deal with Joe Biden and that these MOUs mean nothing much at all. Now the question is, would a Labour government or a Labour Lib Dem coalition pursue more of these deals or focus entirely on cozying up to the EU again? Oh, and talking about the Lib Dems, the party that said uh, bollards to Brexit, I hear their latest leader, Ed Davey, apologised at their party conference today for calling Tories clowns because clowns had taken great offence to being compared to this Conservative government. I used the wrong C word, he said. Anyway, I do wonder if these deals would be compatible to EU single market rules or with the EU treaties. Now, in the MOU with Washington State, it says the aim is to increase trade between the United Kingdom and Washington State through deepening economic development, cooperation and trade relations. But there is a drawback. Although the MOU is not binding, it does have both the UK and Washington State reaffirm their net zero aims and the commitment to the phase-out of unabated coal power by no later than 2030 as participants in the powering past coal alliance. But interestingly, the previous one agreed with Utah did not, as far as I can see, mention this net zero component at all. And the one before that only seemed to mention net zero progress so far as some sort of accomplishment for both signatories. So I'm left wondering if someone in the Biden administration lent on the Washington state governor to make sure some sort of net zero agreement was also in there, now that Rishi is backsliding on the plans the elites have for us. So all that talk by Rishi Sunak about slowing the rush to net zero down might end up being a lot of hot air. Anyway... With every new UK-US individual state agreement we come to, the more pressure will come on the US president to get going with a federal-wide agreement. Now, the Institute for Export and International Trade points to another UK win. A win which I think could end up making Brexit a bit more seamless. And that is in the field of administrative red tape. Yes, we're the experts. A fully digitalised trade shipment has been sent from Burnley to Singapore, landing yesterday, the 25th of September, in what the government calls a landmark moment for the paperless trade, the Institute said. Well, administration and paperless work can be exciting then. All made possible by the recently passed Electronic Trade Documents Act that gives digital trade documents full legal status. With Paul Scully, the Minister for Tech and Digital Economy, saying, We're showing the world that the UK isn't merely a participant in the digital economy. We are at its forefront. This transformative step promises a future where international trade is swifter, more affordable and inclusive for businesses of every size. And the Institute says this could be worth 1.4 billion quid to the UK economy over the next decade. And International Trade Minister Nigel Huddleston said, In a world where everyone pays for things digitally, it's high time we tear up the pointless paperwork and get with the 21st century. And the Department for Business and Trade reckons this will make trade faster and cheaper and less susceptible to fraud and decreasing processing times by up to 75%. So I doubt very much that the EU will be agreeing to use that paperless process with the UK. That wouldn't be punishing us for Brexit, would it? 